G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, I never like to start off, you know, one of these vlogs with bad news, but I think this is something, you know, that everyone needs to know. So if you're not aware, uh, the company Ledger, they had a hack a while ago, but don't worry too much. It wasn't the actual kind of system and the security of the system that was hacked. It was just everyone's personal, well, yeah, just everyone's personal data. It makes it sound like it's uh, nothing too big. But look, that's all it was, if you can put it that way. So people's personal data. Now, not everyone, but uh, a certain amount. I can't remember the exact amount. Personal data was leaked. And look, the people who hacked into it and took all the data, threatened to release everyone's uh, personal data that was on there. Uh, and now it has been released. And look, there's been tons of uh, fake emails coming and they're pre pretending to be from Ledger saying, click on this link you know, to fix up these security breaches and bugs and all the rest of it. If you don't know, never click on links from emails. Never, ever, ever. Just go directly to the website. You know, do the Google search. Make sure you got the right one uh, and have it saved uh, in your browser. Uh, and then just constantly go back to that. If there is anything that needs to be fixed, it'll be done from there. Don't trust any of the uh, emails that you get. But look, now it's also moved on to uh, that people, because again, it was uh, your email address, uh, your residential address and your phone number, I think, were the things that uh, were hacked and released. And look, I've received some of this stuff as well. But no phone calls yet. But basically what's happening is people are now using the phone numbers from that data breach and they're calling you up. And again, it says down here that they're pretending to be... Uh, security services and they're going to help you secure your ledger so that's one of them so look just beware and be careful uh, again you know the ledger itself uh, so far is still safe there's no issues there uh, unfortunately and look i hope ledger really get their act together and this never happens again you know get their act together and, and you know protect everyone's personal data but the ledger itself is safe but just be where you're going to get phone calls and emails and all sorts of silly stuff you know i i got one of those ones where someone says oh they're going to come to you know your house and they're going to target you and all the rest of it good luck come to my house target me if you will uh i live in australia it's pretty safe here uh and i'm pretty confident uh, that you're not going to get anything coming to my place uh, if you can even find it. So, yeah, but beware. And again, really disappointing from Ledger. And hopefully uh, this is something that never happens again and they take the security. You know, it's great that the security of the Ledger is, you know, really, really safe, but our personal data is pretty important as well. So, you know, still like Ledger, still recommend uh, the Ledger itself. Uh, and again, that's just a personal um, opinion. It's nothing more. I'm not a techie or anything like that, but I've used the ledger uh, and it's worked well. But, you know, don't put everything on a ledger. You know, you need to have things on, you know, a few different, you know, maybe two or three ledgers. If you've got a lot of crypto, uh, you know, cold wallets, hot wallets, and you can even leave some on the exchanges, not too much on exchanges in case they get hacked. But that way, you know, you're not going to lose everything if they simply are able to hack uh, your ledger or something like that. And there's there's other devices out there as well. You don't have to have ledgers. Uh, there's te uh, trezors uh, and, you know, paper wallets. I don't use paper wallets and don't recommend them. But, you know, don't have everything just all uh, stored on one thing. That'll really probably come back to bite you at some stage. All right, now... So something else that's a, you know, well, it's good and bad all at the same time. But here we go. We've got a crypto exchange owner who's been sentenced to 10 years in prison for a multi-million dollar scheme to defraud Americans. So we still need to remember that it is very early in the whole crypto space. There's still bad eggs out there. And look, there always will be, but there's just a lot more bad eggs now. Once we get, you know, further regulation and that, uh, it'll hopefully start to, you know, crack down a lot more on it. On them at the moment but look it's good that they caught up with this gentleman uh, and I think he got 121 months or something like that yeah and I think that uh, yeah there we go 120 months uh, 21 months in prison so <laughs> that's gonna take him a while to uh, get through all of that uh, but look you know again that's good and bad news bad news that there's people out there doing it but good news that the authorities were able to catch up with him all right now something interesting you know 
we've had you know people come out and you know there's all this uh, talk about you know whether cryptocurrencies are real money and things like that. Well, the IMF themselves, so they did a poll on Twitter. Now, something we need to remember about Twitter is it's very crypto friendly. A lot of people on Twitter uh, are crypto positive, but they did a poll on there, and what they said is, uh, "Do you consider cryptocurrencies as real money?" Well, eighty percent of them said yes, and only you know under 20 percent you know you can round it up to 20 percent if you like said no so that is telling you right there that a lot of people do consider cryptocurrencies as real money and look um, you know digital well it's digital currencies as real money not just cryptocurrencies uh, and again so the digital dollar and that people will consider them uh, as real money particularly the younger generation they're going to grow up with it and go well we hardly ever use cash now as it is you know Almost everything's kind of done from your card, or at least here in Australia, there's not a whole lot of cash use. And the younger generation, uh, yeah, they're just constantly tap and go, tap and go, tap and go. So for them, digital currencies are real sort of money. And it's not to say they don't ever use real cash, you know, like a lot of kids, you know, when they get our birthday presents, it is actual money uh, and they get cash so on occasions they use it, but yeah. Digital, it is the way of the future. Uh, cash uh, will die off uh, and everything will be digital. But we need to remember some of the digital currencies, you know, they're just fiat in a digital form. Uh, and, you know, they've all gone to zero over time. And, you know, the American dollar is probably not far away from uh, losing its global status. Uh, you know, they're printing it into oblivion. But look, most countries sort of are with the coronavirus and that they have to keep coming out with new stimulus bills and new stimulus bills to keep their countries going, but particularly uh, in America. And the US dollar is the uh, world global currency at the moment. We're all waiting on, you know, the IMF to come up with the new, you know, Bretton Woods thing that it's been spoken about uh, and, and, you know, how that's going to work, whether we will have, and I don't think we will have one uh, world dominant uh, currency. Again, I think they will have a bag uh, that of, you know, currencies that make up, you know, something i don't know we'll have to wait and see but we go down here and this is one of the reasons that uh, people are really liking uh, bitcoin so it's a store of value and more popular it's becoming more popular uh, because the narrative that bitcoin is a store of value just like gold is unlike the latter however the former does present some benefits for example and that it's uh, for example and that it's just the tip of the iceberg it's a lot easier to transport it doesn't have the physical restraints of gold it's hard to devise gold you know it's not like you're gonna you know chip away a little bit to pay for something right then and there uh, and this among other things is the reason for which many companies institutions and analysts are referring to Bitcoin as digital gold and a better version of it that's the narrative that's getting around at the moment and, and I think that's going to continue to grow again you know gold I think it will have its place as its jewelry uh, it looks very nice and people like to wear it uh, and it's used in certain things but as a kind of store of value to transact things I think that is going to slowly die off um, you know I'm not saying you can't store any of your money in gold you know you've got to make up your own minds and none of what I say is financial advice but the upside uh, for gold is it's nothing compared to the digital space it's that analog versus digital you know analog was the way everything was done once upon a time and now everything's going digital and literally pretty much everything is going digital our store of value is going to go digital as well that's just the way it is uh, again I'm, I'm not saying gold is no good and dead uh, it'll always have a place but you know we've got to think you know kind of realistically what drew us to gold thousands of years ago you know when we were trying to have a store of value it was pretty that that is like a very caveman you know sort of uh, attitude oh something shiny pretty oh i want it uh, and we still have that ingrained in us as humans but that's what it is it's that old form wow gold was so pretty and it was rare there wasn't a lot of it uh, and there's still not a whole lot of it but we don't know how much of it is we keep finding more and more and more Bitcoin, we don't. We know there's 21 million uh, and that is it. Uh, there'll never be any more Bitcoin uh, than 21 million. But look, in saying that, Bitcoin is the thing now. In another 100, 200, 300 years, 
there'll probably be something else. It'll have moved on from Bitcoin and that's the way it's probably always going to be. There'll always be something new coming down the pipeline. It's just, you know, again, all, all fiat currencies have lasted roughly sort of 100 years. Uh, the US dollar is getting close. Bitcoin is not a fiat currency, but will it last thousands of years or will it last hundreds of years or will it only last uh, maybe 15 years and all of a sudden there's a bug in it and it doesn't work? I think that's unlikely. If that was true, it would have been found by now. But look, again, I believe Bitcoin is the future for at least at least this generation and the next few generations possibly. But after that, there could be something new. Uh, and we always need to keep our eye out for what's you know coming. It doesn't mean jump onto the next shiny thing constantly. Uh, you'll just get wrecked. But there's no guarantees Bitcoin lasts forever. But I think it is uh, the way of the future for a couple of generations to come. So that's why I've got in the space. Uh, you know, you make up your own mind whether you like it, hate it, love it. I'm guessing if you're watching uh, my channel, you're probably into cryptocurrencies. Uh, and yeah, I, I think Bitcoin is a great store of value. But I already think there's new things coming that will outperform Bitcoin. I'm a massive fan of Ethereum. I think Ethereum is going to uh, surpass Bitcoin. Not as a store of value, Bitcoin will be and will have that store of value. But yeah, the whole web, web, you know, web 3.0 and all the rest of it, you know, and they talk about uh, Ethereum being like digital oil. Uh, I definitely believe that and I think it is going to be huge. Hence why I've built myself a good position uh, in Ethereum. But in saying that, cash is not dead. We still need cash particularly with you know all these dips that happen. If you don't have cash, you can't buy the dip. So don't completely disregard cash. Uh, it still has a place and I don't think, uh, well not so much cash, the dollar. Uh, cash is going away. Cash will be uh, null and void, you know, probably within 10 or 20 years and everything will be digital. But the dollar, uh, that's not dead yet uh, and I don't think it's gonna die anytime soon. At least, you know, some kind of fiat in a digital form, I shouldn't say dollar, because could be pound or you know lira or something else. I don't know what it will be, but you know some kind of fiat form uh, that is not completely dead. All right now, some good news, uh, but really this has been going on for a while. This is just kind of an update. So Mt. Gox obviously had a massive hack uh, years ago, uh, and all that Bitcoin was taken, uh, and they were they managed to get I think you know a majority of it back. I could be wrong, but basically they've got 135,000 uh, bitcoins uh, out of 150,000. With today's price, uh, the seizable amount would be worth at 4.8 billion. So there's 4.8 billion dollars worth of bitcoins uh, looking to be uh, given back to the owners. Now it was something. Uh, there was something in that story I found interesting. They said, as those users have been waiting over six years to receive their coins, whose value has appreciated significantly, the community speculated that they might dispose of the Bitcoins, which could harm the market. I don't think it would harm the market at all. It's 135,000 Bitcoins, and it only totals $4.8 billion. The Bitcoin uh, market itself is worth $700 billion. So I don't think it's going to affect it uh, all that much. Look, will some people sell? Absolutely, but I don't think uh, anyone who's you know had those bitcoins and know they're getting them back and will have watched the space over six years knows that they're probably only going to go higher in the long term. So will some be sold? Yes. And if someone won, you know, if by some miracle one hundred thirty-five thousand bitcoins were put out on the market, I'm confident they would get bought up pretty quick. Could that create like a 20, 30 percent, uh, maybe even possibly 40 percent, although I don't think so. Retracement in the market? Absolutely, it could, but they'd get bought up. I can tell you right now, I'm still buying Bitcoin uh, and I'm bullish on Bitcoin uh, really until maybe sort of $50,000. After $50,000, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I'm not still bullish on Bitcoin, but I just don't know if that's where I'll be putting my money. I think after that, uh, I'll be looking into other spaces uh, because, you know, the next low for Bitcoin, I think, is going to be somewhere around about where we are right now. Could be a little bit lower, could be around sort of, you know, maybe 20,000 to sort of 30,000. Uh, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But for me, once Bitcoin hits sort of $50,000, I won't be looking to put more money into Bitcoin. I think the upside to Bitcoin will be limited over this bull run. I think 
excuse me, the better options uh, will be in some of the other altcoins, and particularly Ethereum. Ethereum hasn't even hit its old all-time high yet. Litecoin hasn't hit its old all-time high yet. Cardano hasn't hit its old all-time high yet. I think they will be the better, better plays uh, to maximize your gains. Now, that's not to say I plan on leaving uh, you know, my money in those. I'm absolutely going to start to uh, take profits from those, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, and I will be taking sort of half the profits that I make in cash and half the profits I will put back into uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. I believe in those long term. Uh, and look again, I got my Cardano at a pretty cheap price. I believe in Cardano long term, but I will be taking profits from them. At the very least, I'm going to, you know, <coughs> excuse me, look to 2x uh, my money, my initial cash investment from them. Uh, and look, pretty much everything I have right now uh, has doubled. Uh, so that won't be hard, you know, and some. So I plan to take that cash out uh, and then the other profits, again, I'll mainly be funneling back into Bitcoin uh, and Ethereum. They are my sort of long-term plays. But, you know, nothing I say is financial advice. I have to say this every video. It's just my personal opinion. That's my plan. Uh, let me know down below in the comments what your plan is. Do you plan to sort of, not so much cash as in the physical cash, but do you plan to take some of those profits and put them back into the dollar? Or are you just gonna you know, put it, leave it all in crypto and just do you plan on writing it for the next you know, 10 years? And that is part of my long-term strategy. I am holding Bitcoin um, long-term. I plan on holding Cardano long-term. I plan on holding uh, Ethereum long-term and, and I plan on holding um, Polkadot long term. They're the ones I'm most bullish on. I still like other projects and there's projects that I've got into that I will sell half to maybe three quarters of those altcoins, but then I will hold on to some uh, because I still believe in the projects. And we'll talk about one of those right now actually. So Stacks. So they have uh, come out and launched their mainnet and they've got a whole stack of partnerships uh, that are currently going with them. So what they are is they're a DeFi platform that's actually a built on, the, on a side chain to Bitcoin. So none of these have really done too well. There's been a couple of others that have launched and are trying to do the same thing, but Stack seems to be doing really well. And so I got myself a position in Stacks, nothing major. Uh, and I have sort of got, I'd say almost all of my money back uh, from Stacks, I put it back into Ethereum and Bitcoin. So really from now, uh, I'm just gonna let it ride till I feel like we're at the peak of the run and then I'll possibly sell about half. Uh, and again, I'll probably put that, uh, you know, from the half that I sell, half of that, uh, a quarter will go into Bitcoin, a quarter will go into Ethereum uh, and then the other half will be into cash. Uh, so that's my plan, but we'll continue on down here. So the Stacks 2.0 main, main net officially launched on Thursday, bringing the promise of a new use case for Bitcoin based on the Clarity smart contract language. As Cointelegraph reported, Stacks 2.0 is attempting to broaden Bitcoin's utility beyond digital gold narrative to include decentralized finance and smart contracts. That includes putting to work the roughly 700 billion in Bitcoin capital currently on the sidelines. Foundry Digital, a digital currency group company, has since announced that it will provide mining services to STX, that's the native uh, Stacks coin, the native cryptocurrency for the Stacks ecosystem. Foundry said the move sends a large clear signal to miners about the opportunity to mine STX. Foundry was one of several independent miners to launch the Stacks 2.0 network on Thursday. Uh, Block Diamond, Demon, I don't know how they say that. Daemon, I think. A blockchain infrastructure platform. A blockchain infrastructure platform. Sorry, struggling with my English as always. Has also announced integration with Stacks 2.0, which will allow institutions and investors to become node operators. We are currently witnessing unprecedented institutional investment into the crypto sphere, demonstrating the need for enterprise grade infrastructure to connect and scale blockchain networks, uh, said the CEO uh, of Block Daemon, uh, Konstantin Richter. So uh, I like Stacks. I like the idea of building on the side of blockchain. Uh, I don't know, you know, how it's going to work exactly. Again, you know, a side chain, I guess, uh, you know, working off blockchain, off Bitcoin sounds really good. 
but I know the Bitcoin community themselves have been very, you know, reluctant to sort of branch outside or change their uh, core. So hence why we'll have to see whether a side chain works very well, you know, with Bitcoin. But uh, I am bullish. I like the team. Uh, you know, I like what they're doing, and it's good to see that they're getting uh, some adoption uh, and other people are getting on board. Uh, I might have to do a deep dive on stacks, I think. Uh, that could be something that I'll look into. So anyway, something to keep in mind. Now, this is interesting. So uh, we all know about the Grayscoin, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Well, it seems they have uh, a competitor in the competitor in the market now. So a firm called Osprey Funds is offering an over-the-counter or OTC Bitcoin trust under the ticker symbol OBTC. The trust is similar to Grayscale's Bitcoin trust known as GBTC. The Osprey Bitcoin trust provides early access to Bitcoin, the firm's website says. With a 0.49% management fee, it is the lowest cost solution. Osprey is an entity that builds digital asset solutions for intelligent investors claiming OBTC as its flagship offering the website ads. OBTC began being quoted in the OTC markets today, uh, Friday uh, the 15th of January 2021. So look out Grayscale, got some competition. Uh, look, in all fairness, they're not the first. Sky Ridge has got one. Uh, and, and other places are doing exactly the same. So a little bit of competition's good, but Grayscale, I mean, they still own, you know, the, the king's ransom uh, of the Bitcoin when it comes to the trusts and things like that. But competition's good, so it gives our institutions and other people uh, another option to get into a Bitcoin trust if for whatever reason they're not happy with Grayscale. You know, a, I don't know anything about Grayscale other than kind of what I read, so I don't know whether they're good to do business with or bad, but I can only assume they're pretty good considering uh, the kind of business that they're doing. Uh, and look, the scary thing is Grayscale are still buying Bitcoin. They bought 2,000 just the other day. So this is another institution that's gonna get in and start to buy up Bitcoin. We are going to come to that liquidity crunch. Uh, there's only so much uh, OTC Bitcoin that can be bought before it's again, grayscale is buying up uh, more than is being the more than is being mined. The two thousand in one day was uh, there's only nine hundred a day that's being mined in Bitcoin, and somehow grayscale managed to buy up two thousand. So another firm doing the same, along with PayPal and Cash App and Square Cash App and all the rest of it. Bitcoin's price will continue to go up, but we're going to get onto the charts and talk about Bitcoin's price. So I did say yesterday that I think we could be on a slow burn coming downwards. I don't think it's going to last forever, but obviously that $40,000 mark, it's a psychological level because 20,000, you know, if we round it up, it was 19,000, sort of 400, 500-ish was the old all-time high. We rounded up to 20,000. We hit 40,000. We went just over and we've been finding a lot of resistance at it. So obviously double the old all-time high people are sort of happy to sell and maybe even some of the whales and all the rest of it are thinking this is a good uh, point to start selling some of the bitcoin they're not you know dumping on mass because it's all just being bought up and i'm sure they think it can go a whole lot higher as i do let's have a look at the charts though so here we can see this is on the daily so as i said just yesterday you know we got to that sort of forty two thousand dollar mark we rolled over and we went all the way down to thirty thousand uh, but look, it only wicked down there. It got bought up pretty quick. Uh, and then we saw this yesterday and I said, look, this needs to hold. And we were sort of hovering around here. And I said, if this rejects, then I think we're, a big, excuse me, I think we are going to be on a slow burn on a downward trajectory for a while. I don't think we're going to dump. Look, it's possible that we can go lower. And obviously by this, we are going lower, but I don't think we're going to go too low. Again, there's just this, too much institutions getting in, you know, retail FOMO are slowly starting to get here. Nothing's gone too crazy yet, although if you've been in the space for a while, it feels like it has. This isn't full crazy yet. Ethereum hasn't hit its all-time high. When that does, things are really going to start to ramp up. And again, you know, you, Cardano hasn't hit its all-time high. Litecoin hasn't hit its old all-time high. When all of those things sort of start to happen, 
that is when you're really going to consider it, you know, that kind of altcoin season. And, you know, then we'll really start to see where uh, things go from there. So we can see this sold off. Now, again, it is the weekend. We hadn't had the weekend retracement. So sad day here in Australia, but this is Friday, you know, obviously back in the States and that. So again, we didn't see uh, it on the Thursday and we didn't get on the Wednesday. Uh, and I've said before, best time to sort of buy Bitcoin on average is Monday uh, after the weekend. And the best time to sell it uh, is Wednesday, you know, before the weekend retracement sort of happens. Now, again, it's not an exact golden rule, but if you go back and look through the charts over time, that's generally what happens. Somewhere around sort of Thursday, uh, you'll have a sell-off over the weekend. It might not be Thursday. It could be Friday, Saturday, or even Sunday. But once that happens, you can buy back in sort of Monday morning if you're an institution or just after the dip on the Wednesday. Uh, and then again, hold it until sort of Wednesday, sell it on the Wednesday, uh, and just rinse and repeat. Now again, none of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, and I don't recommend doing that but that is a pattern that plays out in Bitcoin through a bull run, through a bear market completely different. Uh, so again, I'm waiting to see what happens on this. And look, you could go down into the lower time frames, but again, I'm not really a trader. I'm just you know watching the price on a kind of day-to-day -day basis. And I do think uh, that this is going to range in here for a while. Now, on a daily thing, it means we've got to wait till we don't have to wait, but possibly somewhere around the 25th of January is when we could see a breakout at sort of roughly the latest. It could break out before, but something we need to keep in mind is that it could actually break out to the low side as well. It is possible. Maybe we get down and sort of, you know, come down and test somewhere around about here, 26, 24,000. It is possible. I just don't think it's likely. All right, last but not least, let's go over to this page. All right, it needs to be refreshed. But, you know, we were sitting at just over a trillion and 36,000. All right, let's refresh and see where things are at. So market has gone up. That was 1 trillion uh, and 2 billion. Uh, so we've added basically $10 billion uh, in, you know, I don't know, 20 minutes, you know, half an hour, something like that. So we can see Bitcoin dominance. It is starting to fall. So ETH. Uh, is starting to rise, 13.1, uh, but look, it just continually fluctuates, uh, and gas prices, you know, just sitting around 50, that really is uh, not great for anyone using ETH, but there is news that maybe uh, ETH uh, 2.0 will sort of start to happen a little bit sooner. Uh, I couldn't find any stories on it. Uh, I'll have to wait and see. That's just something I heard. I think it was from Ivan on Tech saying something like that. So as soon as I can find an article or something like that, I'll bring it to you. But yeah, so the market cap, again, it's going back up. So we'll have to wait and see where this goes. Uh, Bitcoin dominance has dropped sort of slightly. Again, it was up around 71, 72%. Uh, and, you know, it's ever slow, slowly coming down with ETH starting to rise. Now, for me, once Ethereum breaks its old all-time high of around about $1,400, uh, that's when I think we're really going to start to see that alt season. Alts have been performing well, but I think it's after Ethereum hits its old all-time high and goes above it. I think that's when we're really going to start to see money move again. People have made their money in Bitcoin. They've moved it into Ethereum, waiting for Ethereum to hit its all-time high. Uh, and then they sort of move into uh, the alts. And again, money has moved into the alts. It's not like it hasn't. They've been doing quite well, but really... We need to see Ethereum crack its old all-time high and then, yeah, we'll wait and see, you know, again, projects made 10x in a matter of a week. At least that's what happened back in 2017. All right, let's have a quick look. Over 24 hours, what's performed well? Because we can see Bitcoin and Ethereum are down a little bit over the 24 hours and they are down over the week. So again, things are, you know, sliding a little bit on a downward slope. All right, big moves. Whew, IOST. I mean, it's been on an absolute rip snorter up basically, you know, let's round it up 300% in seven days. So done well and up 73% uh, in 24 hours. Cosmos. Uh, I had Adam for ages and it just wasn't really doing too much. It was slowly growing uh, and I sold half my Adam and now it's finally starting to move. Look, I've still got half my Adam there, so I I'm glad uh, I didn't sell it all. But again, the gains that it's made, uh, you know, I was better having my money in Bitcoin because while this is great, it's taken months 
for these kind of gains to happen and Bitcoin's done so much better and Ethereum as well. And again, I'm not trying to throw shade on Cosmos or any of these coins, but that's what you need to remember is generally Bitcoin uh, does the best over the long term. Uh, it doesn't go up as high all the time, uh, but it does it sort of more steadily and it doesn't go down as low as well. But again, you need to do your research on that. Uh, you know, again, learn to read charts and all the rest of it. But Chainlink finally starting to make some moves. It's broke its old all-time high. Uh, and as you can see, well, that's over the seven days. So we need a big uh, Chainlink chart. But it has, I think its old all-time high was like $18, $19. So it's now in price discovery. So this could really start to move. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Look, double-digit gains are always great. Uh, not bad at all. Aave as well just goes from strength to strength. Uh, you know, I can't believe uh, how lucky I got in Aave. Uh, it's up there with my best performer, that and synthetics. But I am kicking myself that I didn't buy more Aave. I actually bought the old Lend token, as I said, and I picked it up for about three cents or something. And I put in only three, a four hundred dollars. Now that four hundred dollars is currently worth over four thousand dollars. So I've ten xed my money. Uh, and you know, again, I only wish I had have put in, uh, put in more. But look, them's are the breaks, and in the end, I've still 10x my money. You know, turn $400 into $4,000. Uh, I'm not upset by it uh, at all. Uh, and I really like Ave, and I think it's still got plenty more upside to come. Uh, Voyager token has been doing extremely well. Uh, you know. I should have done more research into Voyager Token. But Ren as well, finally starting to make some moves. I'm really happy with Ren. And look, again, lots of coins are doing quite well, the altcoin space. But look, there are some losses, and let's have a look at them. Celsius Network, again, it you know had such a big pump. Of course, it was going to sell off at some stage. I still really like Celsius Network. Uh, I'd love to get involved. Uh, I just haven't yet. Uh, and it's not available, this coin itself, uh, on my exchange uh, I may have to, you know, go to look to actually, you know, put some stuff on the Celsius network. But yeah, of course, there's going to be a sell off. It did so well, it rocketed up so far. Uh, but look, these losses, uh, they're not really too bad. Again, they're, you know, single digit losses uh, over a 24 hour period. That really is not a whole lot uh, in the grand scheme of things, you know, when we're talking about crypto. So, all right, that's it for me. Uh, interesting weekend. Again, Lastly, we'll just go back, you know, is this the sell-off for the weekend and do we now just start to recover and break out or are we going to do this slow burn where basically we're just going to kind of bounce around in here for a while and then do we break to the upside or is it possible that we break to the downside? Very, very interesting. I think breaking to the downside is less likely. Uh, I think breaking to the upside ever so slightly is more likely, although I do think the buying pressure for Bitcoin uh, has sort of slowed down again it's double its old all-time high i think you know institutions uh, who are looking to get in will be you know a little bit slower to get in but you know i could be wrong i do think the altcoins uh, are the better bet at the moment and again not financial advice please don't uh, take anything i say as financial advice that's just where i plan to put my money uh, at the moment i'll always have cash sitting on the side for if there's you know a bitcoin dip uh, and I'll buy more Bitcoin, but I think the altcoin space at the moment is where it's at. And once Ethereum breaks its old all-time high, which I think it will, I think that's when we're really going to see altcoins start to just, you know, go crazy. And I, I think Bitcoin continues to go up during that. Uh, it's just, I think Bitcoin has kind of slowed down a little bit here. Could be wrong, have been wrong before, will be wrong again. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. There's definitely gains out there and I'll see you next time.